In this video, we are going to explore six distinct ways to read and parse a JSON file in C-sharp, providing examples to illustrate how to use them effectively. We will parse the JSON string using either the Newton JSON library or the system text JSON, featuring a unique combination of reading and parsing tools. Now, we have already prepared our project with a sample JSON file that we are going to read and use for testing purposes. This JSON file will be the input data for all the methods in this video. We also prepared two classes that we are going to use when reading the JSON file, the course class and the teacher class. As you can see, both classes contain properties that match the properties in the JSON file. We also have Newtons of JSON installed in our project. Now, to start with our examples, let's create a new class and name it read and parse JSON file with Newtonsoft JSON. Let's remove these and make the class public. Now, let's define a private read only string variable named sample json file path and create a constructor that initializes this field now let's create our first method that returns a list of teachers and name it use the serialize object with newtonsoft json here, we create a new stream reader object named reader by providing the path of our JSON file to the constructor. The using statement ensures that the stream reader is disposed of properly when we are done with it. After that, let's create a new JSON variable and call the reader.readToEnd method to read the content of the stream. Then let's deserialize all the teachers by calling the JSON convert dot deserialize object method with the list of teachers as a type parameter and passing in the JSON string as an argument. Finally, we return a list of teachers deserialized from the JSON data. So, as you can see, it is quite simple to use a stream read and simple deserialization to read the content from the file and create a list of teacher records. Now, let's see how we can read and parse JSON file using the JSON text reader in C Sharp. First, let's define a public method that returns a list of teachers and name it useJSON text reader in Newtonsoft JSON. Here, we create a JSON serializer object to deserialize the JSON data. Then, we also need an empty list of type teacher to store the deserialized data. Next, inside the using directive, let's define a stream reader variable, instantiate it, and provide the path to the JSON file. Also, Let's add another using directive and inside create a new text reader variable and then use a JSON text reader to read the JSON data from the stream reader. To deserialize a list of teachers, we call the serializer dot deserialize method and pass the JSON text reader as an argument. Finally, let's return the list. In the last method, let's see how we can use the jarray.parse method with Newtons of JSON to read and parse a JSON file. To demonstrate this, let's define a new public method with the same return type and name it use jarrayParse in Newtonsoft JSON. 
First, let's create a stream reader object named reader and provide the file path as an argument. Then, let's create a JSON variable to read the content of the JSON file by calling the reader dot read to end method. We also need a jarray variable and let's use the jarray.parse method and provide our JSON string as an argument. This method parses the string into a jarray object, which is a collection of jtoken objects representing the data in the JSON file. We then create an empty list of teacher objects called teachers. So let's use a for each loop to iterate through each jtoken in the jarray. For each jtoken, we create the teacher variable named teacher and call the item dot to object of teacher method to create a teacher object using the properties of the jtoken. After that, we add the newly created teacher object to the teachers list. Finally, we return the list of teachers. So, we have our three methods created and now let's navigate to the already prepared test class for Newton JSON. As you can see, we are reading the content of the prepared JSON file and also have the expected object as a result. There are also three test methods where in each one we call a different method we just created and verify that the result is of least teacher type and that the two objects are equal. The expected one and the one we get from calling our created methods. So let's navigate to the test explorer, find our test methods and run them. And we can see all three paths. This means we can continue with reading the JSON file, but this time with system text JSON. First, let's create a new class and name it read and parse JSON file with system text JSON. And clear these things out and make the class public. Inside, we will again create a private read only string variable named sample JSON file path and add a constructor. For the system text JSON library, we have to enable the case insensitive property name matching. To allow this, let's define a private read only field of the JSON serializer options type named options. Instantiate it and set the property name case insensitive property to true. When we pass these options as an argument to the JSON serializer dot deserialize method, the deserializer will be able to match properties regardless of their casing. This can be useful in scenarios where our JSON file may come from different sources with different casing conventions. Now let's explore the various methods for reading and parsing a JSON file. First, let's learn how to read and parse a JSON file using the file.readAllText method. Let's create a new public method that returns a list of teachers and name it useFileReadAllText with system text JSON. We can start with the JSON variable and call the file.readAllText method to read the content of the specified file. We also have to provide the path as an argument. Next, let's create a teachers variable and use the JSON serializer class to deserialize the JSON string into a list of teacher objects. We do this by invoking the deserialize list teacher method 
and providing the JSON string and R options as arguments. Finally, we return the serialized list of teacher objects. As you can see, using the file.readall text method in combination with the JSON serializer class allows us to quickly and easily convert JSON data into strongly typed objects. Alternatively, we can use the file.openread method with systemtext.json to read and parse JSON files. To start, let's define another method with the same return type and name it use file open read text with system text json inside the methods body we create a new file stream object by calling the file.openread method and pass the path of our json file this method opens the file in read only mode and returns an object that we store in a variable named json we again need the teachers variable and call the static json serializer dot deserialize method with a list of teachers as a type to convert the file stream object into a list of teacher instances finally we return the list of teachers we can also use the stream reader class to read a json file and then use the system text json library to parse the return json string to see how this works let's create a final method with the same return type and name it use stream reader with system text json in this method let's create a new instance of stream reader named stream reader and pass the path of our JSON file as an argument. Then let's create a JSON variable and call the stream reader dot read to end method to read the entire content of the JSON file as a string. Next, to fetch all the teachers, we invoke the static JSON serializer dot deserialize method with a list of teachers as a generic type and one last time we have to return the list of teachers now as we did with the previous Newtsoft implementation we can navigate to the already prepared test class but this time for system text json as you can see the implementation is the same so let's navigate to the test explorer find our tests, run them, and we can see all the three paths. Great! Now we know the six ways to read and parse the JSON file in a C-sharp project. But also, let's run the benchmark on the file of 10,000 JSON records to see how each of these created methods behaves. We have already prepared our benchmark class and also the data for benchmarking with 10,000 JSON records. So, all we have to do is to change this to release and run our project. Of course, let's skip to the results. From this, we can see that using system text JSON is the fastest option with each method, and also each method allocates less memory. But to be honest here, the differences are not that big, so if you are already using Newtsoft in your project, there is no issue with using it to reading the JSON file as well. So, that's it. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you like the video and want to support us. You can also use that bell button to get notifications from our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in the next video. Until then, all the best.